for use on the internet. Contextual data can be put across that. So the most detailed mapping that's available to identify buildings, sites of interest, so health sites, education sites, industrial um, locations, all structured and, and, and very visible and queryable within the data. We also, um, in conjunction with major government departments, DFT and, and the Environment Agency, started to bring out um, more analytical products for interrogation of networks. So in the case of the water network, um, the Environment Agency publishing increasing volumes of um, of open data. Michael was here last week just talking about that, that giving um, an open uh, network, hydrological network against which some of that open data can be structured. The same for roads, begin to publish the DFT classification of the road network and, and allow some basic analysis um, of public sector information that's been published around, around the ro road network. Release a network, uh, uh, a network through that, so it's not a routable network in that sense, it's a much more complex set of data uh, required to enable to route through a network, but to be able to perform statistical analysis and analyze the data around that network, and um, both the open roads and open river products enable you to do that. And finally, um, a new set of gazetteer data. So there's a lot of gazetteer data from ourselves and other located detailed, if you like, um, set of name-based data to which you can drill and search for places um, within Great Britain. The mapping. Um, so you would you would expect that we we're not about open mapping. We are very much about open data, and and in that regard, uh, we've given a lot of thought in recent times to trying to extend the value of the data beyond just simply presenting a map. Um, I was looking earlier on just on the window etchings as we came into this room. There's a whole load of nice quotes about mapping and such like around. I eventually come back to the data that sits behind the map. So. We're structuring now our data to enable that querying, um, to enable data to be associated with that base mapping information, so information about rivers, being able to append it to a data set that describes the geometry of the river itself. Information about roads, be that traffic accidents perhaps, or being able to associate that back to the road um, carriageway itself. So when we released our data back in 2000, uh, sorry, in earlier this year, back in April, we tried to coin two, uh, sorry, three very clear terms about why you would use ordnance survey data. I'll come back to why how this is so important in a little while. I think previously, between 2010, 11, 12, our data was very much about um, viewing. You could view maps, you could, you could sit other government data sets, other data from data.gov.uk, other open data, and contextualize um, a base map. It was very difficult to to pin your information, to associate other information to that map data in order to be able to analyze. And we've had to think very carefully about some of the, um, the further back to doing that. So we believe our proposition, if you like, for our data products today is very much about more than viewing, but also pinning and, and sharing data within that and, 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 it, and offering that. And so we're also thinking much more about services um, within, within OS at present. Um, it's not an on a, on a website to make it available for download. Um, by its very nature, some geographical data is relatively complex. Uh, as an industry, uh, geographic information is quite difficult to, to consume. Uh, at times, you need sophisticated um, geographic information system, um, knowledge to be able to work with that data. It makes it very difficult to take it, if, if you have uh, geographic data before, put it into your new development and immediately work with it much more easy to consume a service where a lot of that heavy lifting has been done for you. So we're publishing a lot of our data now through services. Open services, uh, I've got on the screen behind you there. Um, a range of different data sets available um, to you to be able to display boundaries, to be able to query on place names, um, to be able to search around postcodes and so on and so forth. They're all um, today under the OS Open Space product. Um, a sneak preview we're working at with at present is, th is um, so odd choice of phrase, uh, redesigning in this, in this case, um, a new API user experience um, to sit across all of our products, that's both our open products and also our premium products. So developers can come in, up through a, a, a number of different uh, lenses and explore the range of services and data and content that's available behind those APIs, more easily connect with them and um, to think about the uh, mechanisms by which someone would come along as a, as a developer, someone starting out with data, and, and engage with that at a business level 
um, as much as, as 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 much as an entrepreneurial level, if you like. Um, for us, over the last few years, and I just want to kind of so that's a bit about our products and, and services. So hopefully, um, if you weren't familiar about those before, you are you are now. Um, a little bit about our experiences, I guess. I think what we've really realized, and I, and I guess I'm teasing um, everyone by a sense of, of the title of the talk. So having open data is great, just putting it out there, uh, our experience hasn't, hasn't been so positive. So by putting data out there and assuming that people will use it and do great things with it is partly true. We've seen some fantastic success stories. Um, our own experience is that's not enough. So to create sustainability about the use of that data, that means a conversation with your end users. I mean, I'm, I'm a product guy at heart, so you want to understand who your users are. You want to understand what they're doing with your data. You want them to talk to you about what they would like to be able to do with that data and what's limiting in that. On a website, allowing people to download it, hoping to catch the old email address, and, and doing that across a million downloads doesn't engage that, that kind of audience. So I think we've had to work really hard to think, and we still are thinking, so this is kind of, um, a, a degree of transparency with you about how our data um, starts a journey um, with our, our future users. The geographic information marketplace is one whereby there's enormous opportunity at present, driven uh, by no small way by the, um, by the drive of mobile and, and smartphones and other similar devices, to connect with that community and start making the right really important to us so that as, as people become more familiar with some of the open data products we can do, um, they, they, they may have a demand for, for other types of data we might be able to help them with. So the, the impression we create is, is important at the start. Um, it's been really important for us to build the right kind of stakeholder communities that sit around that understand um, all the manner of different uh, out there. So um, any of you who are building and designing products in the market will be familiar with, with the need to kind of engage at this level. So capturing user thinking about the community of users you're trying to serve, capturing feedback in some sort of constructive sense, being able to react to that, respond to it in some way, um, improve experiences behind that data. All of these things are really important for us to, um, to work through and trap. And so over the last few years, we've been building those communities, um, very much working in some, um, in some aspects through ODI. It's been a really important community for us to build out. Um, but also developing our own developer communities, reaching out through um, businesses in the marketplace. Um, or may not, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about Geovation, which is our own innovation um, network towards the end of this presentation. But to reach out and engage with developers um, to, to try and build that um, through. What I would say is that as an observation is that hasn't been, um, that hasn't been an easy journey. Um, you, you can meet lots of people. Uh, you can uh, have a lot of enthusiasm for publishing data, but to build that depth of relationship and to gain that feedback is something which um, is not so straightforward and is something which I think as an open data publisher and probably a community of open data publishers, we need to do um, lots more um, work around and it's something which we've got a number of conversations and doing that at, at the moment. Um, so we have broadly probably three communities of users talk, um, that we talk to today. So our traditional um, geographic information system, developers type um, professional users of data who, who um, undoubtedly want to consume and do some really interesting things with open data. So a GIS community, they speak our language. Um, they, they have very specific requirements. And, and for them, a lot of this is about data that perhaps I may have paid for being available for free. Um, two other communities that are really interesting to us, um, developers developers who may not be so familiar with geographic information, um, who may not even be that familiar with using mapping, who default to using um, specific types of data that's available to them. So reaching out to developers, actually us changing our language, learning a new language to approach to that community is equally as important. And also working out and, and reaching out to um, citizens. It's not, it's not a great word to describe that, um, that community, but there's a huge group of people doing enormous amounts of social good based on the technology that's now available to them and be able to, to reach to them, explain to them the opportunities that are available to them and capture that um, is, is really important to us. Um, licensing data for an organization like ourselves is, is our business. Um, we license uh, data under a number of different uh, uh, business models and so on and so forth. Something which we're very proud to have been associated with in the last um, four years now 
is involvement in the development of the open government license. And in many respects, um, Ordnance Survey have been um, right at the heart of the development of a really simple um, open government license, the, the, the current version, version three, um, that has been developed in the last year or so. All of our open data products are licensed under OGL3. Um, we also go further than that um, with our government uh, customers and, and government community over the last couple of years and allowed them to presume the right to publish under cer most circumstances. So as long as they're not um, publishing some of our premium products for, for free reuse, which would obviously not be um, so great, uh, a real presumption to publish government information based on our data, as long as they do that under the same terms by which we also publish our open data, which is under the open government license. Um, significant work to clarify our position on licensing. I think many people still see ordnance survey data as being difficult, but hopefully over the last six months we've we've really moved a long way to, to remove that um, perception through both a combination of presumption to publish for public sector publishing open data, but also our adoption of OGL3 um, publishing our own open data products. So just to share a few um, case studies with you and um, to give you a flavor of some of the things that have been done. Um, if you uh, visit Ordnance Service website and there are a number of different things around there, it's os.uk slash open data. It's straightforward. There's a whole range of different case study material um, around that. These are anything from um, some of our government customers um, publishing data on, as an overlay on some of our open background, a range of different business customers doing the same, a um, number of different portals and observatories setting up. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with the, the urban observatory city, a whole range of different um, city um, examples being played out, different city information being displayed. Um, both informing sort of smart city development, but just generally otherwise informing um, citizens around um, around the operation and the utility of their city environment. So in, in London, we're providing a lot of our open data being used within there. A whole range of social good projects, a um, number of those regularly showcased at ODI events where you can see um, the value of, um, of, back, um, of mapping in the background um, from ourselves, giving context to that. Um, we've done a, a number of projects with the Environment Agency of a lot of their open data um, earlier this year, um, some of their data being published and being connected in, so I talked earlier on, the compatibility between the EA and flood and our own um, open rivers network, being able to, to visualize and display that. Um, huge amounts of information being published on data.gov.uk and the ability to visualize that, structure it back to some of the source boundary information uh, to which it refers. And, uh, and in the case of many of the smart city initiatives that are growing up across Britain, um, now the, uh, this example from Glasgow being underpinned in many cases by, um, by Ordnance Survey um, open data. Collaborations are also really important to us. We're heavily involved with um, some of the other um, partners that we, that we maintain across government in the Environmental Science and Services Partnership, the SSP. So a real collaboration around these organizations concentrating on making data available making data available collaboratively that, that can work together um, to solve common problems. So one of the initiatives we're working on at present is the data spring under the ESSP, um, really to help um, give a front to information which enables um, organizations to come together and access environment about some of the environmental processes that that data to underpins. And to recognize in the same vein that putting data um, out there on its own is not enough, but thinking about um, developing front ends to that information through APIs, um, in this case, laying a, an API layer out there, being able to take and, and then demonstrate the consumption of that into a number of different solutions and services that sit on top of that. So you get the kind of model around that. So I talked a lot um, earlier on about work bed yourself within the developer community to understand what your users are looking for to gain that feedback. Um, Earlier this year, uh, we opened, and the, the formal opening was just two weeks ago, um, Innovation Hub um, in the East End of London here. Um, over near Find and the Geovation Hub um, is co-located in with the Future Cities Catapult. Um, it's a brand new space, if you like, which we've opened in London um, specifically to uh, really get behind uh, the need to uh, connect developers entrepreneurs, innovators with uh, geographic data generally. That, that could absolutely be Ordnance Survey's data product, but its geography generally is, is, is very much at the heart of that. That's come from um, a background in Geovation projects. So I've mentioned Geovation earlier on, which was a, 
a number of different, well, it was a proven model, if you like, for um, stimulating collaboration based around geography. We ran a number of different um, catapult style um, programs uh, to bring groups together to, to tackle um, specific problems that we identified for which geography would act as a, as a fundamental underlying um, uh, group to, to do that. Uh, we've had over 2,500 participants themselves in the competitions to date, a number of different camps, hackathon style camps. Uh, we've helped create 31 startups and, and we've uh, been involved in the awarding of uh, over £700,000 worth of funding around that. So off the back of the success of Geovation, uh, we wanted to make that a little bit more real and, 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 op and open uh, a specific hub, if you like, as a focal point to, um, to take that forward. Um, very much behind uh, growth in the economy, so looking to bring um, groups together um, who have a geocentric purpose, um, who want to come and innovate with geographic data to, um, to, to make the connection, if you like, between our own products, other open data products that or, or premium products for that matter that may be available around geography, um, to help innovators and developers understand some of that data better, to bring developers together with um, with experts across a whole range of different domains and of course provide some um, support and access to our own open data product. So the sorts of people we would expect to, to be involved in, in the hub working with, um, they could be developers in their own right, um, in, that, in the makers community, uh, innovators, um, a number of different uh, common discovery skills that, um, that we've designed things for there and to bring them together with entrepreneurs um, folk who have got real technical backgrounds, business opportunity backgrounds, and, to, and to, to help bring some of those ideas to fruition. The common purpose being that um, typically those ideas are based around geography in some way or another. So if you haven't heard about the Geovation Hub, um, which is the, the physical space that we've, we have over at Clark and Well, um, have a look at the um, website in a minute. Have a look at that. Um, it's not open data specifically. Um, it's far more that, than that, but we see that as very much part of our um, program of outreach, program of development to encourage people to find out more about um, geography, more about geographic open data, and to really get behind um, understanding that more. So to collaborate, exchange ideas, innovate and be inspired, um, and understand geographic data more. So for us, um, our mantra is about improving the quality of our open data that we have today, um, to improving the use of that, improving the understanding of that, working really hard to, to reach out beyond our traditional communities, um, at the same time recognizing that, that the business that sits behind that needs to be sustainable. Um, our own open data today, we're very comfortable seeing as more of a freemium um, model for a lot of um, open data products, stimulating use, stimulating interest, and, and that value back into our other product range to kind of and bridge that gap and ensure that the open data can continue to be uh, sustainably funded. So I was on a mission to talk for no more than 20 minutes, so hopefully I've managed to just about achieve that. Um, a few of you looking at your watches, maybe a few more minutes on top of that. Uh, hopefully that was interesting. Um, hopefully that kind of filled out a few blanks in, in folks' minds that you didn't previously maybe know or appreciate. I'm very happy to, to stand for a bit longer and have a, have a conversation with you about any aspects of that. Thank you very much for listening.